All right, we we are live. Um, I pressed the button like something new was going to happen. I do one of these every week and I'm like, huh, what's going on? Um, so uh, hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. Uh, I see the names popping in here, which I love. I love seeing everyone uh, roll in as always. Uh, give us a chat. Tell us where you're where you're joining us from, um, and it's good to see everyone's name. Don Hopper, she's been on like almost every one, and Donald has been on almost every one. Sherry from Arizona, uh -huh. so really good to see everybody's names. Sherry, me again. See, she said it's a great name, by the way, Sherry. I really appreciate that. I uh have -huh. been on almost all of our webinars, and these have become um, something I look forward to every week, just so I can see your names and catch up, and we can continue to have the conversation of how yeah. we get through this together. <laughs> wow, I'm looking at all the participants. No pressure. No pressure. No oh pressure. Oh my goodness. I hear what you have to say, but you know, <laughs> don't worry about having to be profound or anything. Oh. <laughs> As everyone is, is logging on here, uh, for those of you that were with us on May the 7th, you'll recognize Christine Geary. She uh, was uh, on one of our webinars previously, and I'm really looking forward to kind of seeing the arc of what's happened between then and now and how, how her outlook might have changed for the company between then and now. Um, and we also have uh, Chloe with Ruby Range Adventure. Um, having a little trouble tech-wise, so she's gonna try to, to join us a little bit later, but we wanted to go ahead and get started because there's so much for us to talk about. And, and I love, you know, uh, Simon from Quebec City, love that. Um, and Sarah from Ithaca, she's been on most all of these. So, I mean, you, you um, John Marshall, you're gonna be great. Christine, no pressure. Now they already, they already know you're gonna be great. See, so there's no pressure at all. Um, <laughs> So we're, I mean, we're going to have a good conversation. We're all curious about Canada. Uh, we know that the latest is the borders aren't going to open until November 21st. So we're curious to know if you're hearing anything different than that. Um, so I think, I mean, we have, we have tons of stuff, uh, tons of stuff to cover, but uh, as usual, and for anyone that maybe doesn't know you, Christine, how about you introduce yourself and your company and then we'll go from there. Sure. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Christine Geary. I am the president and CEO of Maple Leaf Tours. We are based in Kingston, Ontario, Canada. For those of you unfamiliar geographically, we are in the Thousand Islands, upstate New York, pretty much between Toronto, Montreal, and Ottawa. So right in the middle of that, uh, of that triangle. I've uh, been in business um, since 1983. Uh, oh, no, sorry, 93, 93. 93, you're aging yourself. Come on now, 93. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you no, know, in here, I'm still 32. <laughs> uh, but our, uh, our predominant market is outbound um, to the U.S., uh, has been predominantly outbound um, for a lot of that, for, for the majority of that time. And we are seeing a, uh, a huge... Um, change in that trend uh, based on what we're hearing back from our clients. Um, you know, I have been and I continue to be involved in all industry uh, Zooms, webinars, updates, because that's really the only way to keep your pulse on what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I said on May 7th when I was here on the panel, you know, it's like playing whack-a-mole because as soon as you hit something, something else pops up, you know, for example, the CDC, you know, let the, the band, the cruising band lapse and then Carnival 4 extends its no sale to, you know, then we're thinking, okay, on Monday, everything was going crazy. And then Carnival announced that they were extending their no sale to the end of the year. So people who were booking for Christmas all of a sudden couldn't book. So everybody was waiting to see what other cruise lines were going to follow suit. Um, we do a huge part, a huge part of our market is uh, group cruising and we only do groups. We don't do FITs. Um, so, you know, we're looking at how that's all going to roll out. Uh, you know, we've been, you know, watching the election results in the U.S., obviously, to see, uh, you know, how that's going to, to play out in, in future travel plans. Um, what we've been hearing even over the last four years from our clientele is that we have had resistance to a cross-border cross tour and travel, um, just, you know, based on the situations that are going on uh, in various locations in the U.S., 
So, um, you know, in, in May, I think like everybody else, you know, when this all started, you know, we all thought, okay, well, this is going to be a couple weeks. And then we thought, well, let's learn how to bake bread and <laughs> not taking bread. And then everybody got sick of bread. And then it got to be summer and we were going to be outdoorsy and fun. And now everybody's going into fall and they're just all like, this completely sucks. You know, because, you know, we're not going to start the whole bread thing again. We just can't eat that much bread. Right. Um, not now when we're inside and it's got to be getting cold up there for you, right? Yes, it is. So I think, you know, how, uh, how am I doing? Uh, yeah. Terrible, terrible. Uh, we haven't had a sale since March 14th. That has not changed, even when things seem to be picking up. Uh, we continuously do refunds. We have a sold out tour uh, that was expected to go to Florida in February. Uh, we have canceled that this week uh, because the clients just will not go. And uh, we were hoping, we were thinking, well, why don't we wait and see what happens with the election? Maybe the, uh, but, it, but really the election is, is second place to their safety. Right. You know, and so I think that's what, uh, what we're hearing. Now, the other thing that I am hearing from, hi, Chloe. I'm so sorry. We actually were just chatting and tuning in. Everyone was getting um, logged on and uh, Christine was telling us a little bit about uh, how she's doing in the company. So before we go any further, why don't you take a second, introduce yourself and your company, uh, Ruby Range Adventure, kind of tell us what you focus on. Yes, so Ruby Range Adventures, we are a tour operator located in the Yukon, in Whitehorse to be exact. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we do is uh, basically small group tours uh, with clients from all around the world. So we uh, take people on adventures. Uh, we have kind of like two big um, sides of our company, which one is like pure adventures such as canoe trips, hiking trips. Uh, camping trips and we have a more uh, soft side which is a bit more a uh, sightseeing adventures through the Yukon and Alaska. Perfect. Nice. Um, well we're going to spend some time as as we always do and I will I will let everyone know um, we keep monitor of the chat really really closely um, so if you have any questions you can put them in the chat. Um, I will tell you it's much easier to, to put questions in the Q&A box so we can monitor it there. Um, and and have a really fun conversation on what's going on in Canada and how that may um, affect tours coming into the North America to North America and kind of how how we're going to get through this together. Kind of the topic of all of our webinars are how we're going to recover together through this situation. Um, and Christine touched the touched on a little bit. We uh, currently have borders closed until November twenty first. Um, and we had someone in the chat say, I hear it's going to be longer than that. And we do as well. Um, so uh, Christine and I were talking earlier and, and it looks like she's heard it might be through the first of the year. I don't know if you've heard anything differently, Chloe, but. Uh, At this point, it's month by month. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we, I think we're taking it day by day, hour by hour, right? So. Um, I think that um, that certainly certainly things change quite frequently and continue to throughout this uh, entire situation. Um, so, um, Christine, tell us a little bit. You were you were starting to tell us that you know kind of dreary this 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 year, the rest of this year as far as bookings go. Um, your February booking not looking that great. Well, that's Feb no, that's February twenty twenty one. Yeah. Right. And so do so you have anything after that? One of the things that we've heard, you know, quite a bit, um, you know, back in May when we first had our conversation, it was, yeah, February 2021 is when things are really going to pick up. And we slowly started seeing that move, you know, kind of seeing that move back to maybe end of March, maybe the summer. I think that the collective that we've heard right now is summer 2021 is what we should be looking at. Um, so have you heard anything from your clients about later in the year? Well, I've heard from clients, but I think, you know, like I was, I, I was just going to mention, I think for anybody, I don't know, I, 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 can, I can see that we've got a ton of participants on here. And if anybody wants to reach out to me after this and we can chat further, that would be fine. It's Christine with a K at Maple Leaf Tours. I know Amy from Drury is on here. I saw her pop up. Um, but what I'm finding is what I think is very important is that if, 
what's helping me kind of keep uh, an eye on the prize is being involved in all the association um, webinars and Zooms. Like for those, for example, I don't know how many members are, um, or how many participants are members of ABA, the American Bus Association. So yesterday they had a, they had a, a webinar. They have one every Wednesday and they're, they're free. If you're a member, um, you contact them. And yesterday was, was amazing because it was all about the statistics based on from March to this to this time frame here. And they were all sort of talking about um, what they what um, they did nothing but she actually sent me the slides and they were phenomenal. We don't really see a lot of movement until, um, you know, 2021 Q3, right? Looking, you know, June forward, you know, we know for sure that, you know, Broadway's not opening until June 1st. So there's the big one. Right, all of my dates that were booked for 2021 in New York City are gone. Um, anything that was booked pre um, that, like pre June 1st, is gone. You know, we're looking at the cruise lines expecting to be nearly up to full complement. They're hoping by October of 2021, right? So moving into Q4. So I mean, you know, the, the problem is, is that you know. At starting in March, even when I was on here in May 7th, I was thinking, okay, I'm happy to just sit here and incubate, uh, you know, but that's a heck of a lot of an incubation period, um, you know, so to keep positive, you know, and that's, I think that's the challenge. Um, I was involved on uh, last week on the, um, the global European market, which is uh, a marketplace for the European uh, tour operators. Um, and I was involved in that and I dealt with operators all over Europe and they're finding the same thing. They have no business on the books in 2020 and they don't have anything on the books until June, July of 2021. You know, one of the gentlemen I spoke to had a group, actually I saw him, we're Facebook friends now, and uh, he posted his group. They were in Dresden and he had a group of 20, you know, on a 56 passenger motor coach. He was happy with that. I mean, everybody was in masks, but I mean, I look at that and I think, you know, I don't want to be that company that's going to have the headlines in the paper saying, you know, tour group in, in Dresden, you know, contracts COVID. So I think there's a lot of people hedging their bets and wanting to try and do something. But I think a lot of people, a lot of tour operators don't want to be the person in the headlines. Now, I can't speak for FITs because I know that FITs are traveling from Canada to the Caribbean. Like the Caribbean is open, Right. So I know we've got flights out of Montreal. We've got flights out of Ottawa and Toronto and, and people are starting to gear up for FITs, you know, uh, at Christmas time, because I think like so many of us, you know, they're suffering from this, you know, pandemic fatigue, isolation fatigue. And, uh, you know, there's, I think there's from what I'm hearing and, uh, on all the zooms, I'm probably on six a week, at least six a week. And hearing everything that's going on around the world, like I, one of the one of the tour operators I spoke to is in Tuscany, and he does inbound, right? And he's got nothing on the books. He even he owns a um, a pensione, and he's got nothing on the books, even you know even local. So I mean, everybody around the world is is feeling the same thing. When when I was on the global uh, the European one, Germany's gone back into lockdown. So they don't have any, Spain is in lockdown. Um, the UK is going back into lockdown. So what, we're, what I'm hearing on all of these Zooms is that, on all of these webinars, is that it's worldwide. It's not just North America. Right. From my point of view, and I'm sorry, Chloe, I'm talking a lot. Feel, feel <gasps> you interject because I'm- I was gonna say, Chloe, if you don't know Christy, you just have to jump in and she's totally fine with it. Yeah, your hand up. It's not good, it's very interesting. <laughs> But what I am hearing, you know, from my clients and what I'm seeing as a trend or what's, what's possibly going to be happening in the future is that I'm going to have more demand for European travel. They're very leery about crossing that border, you know, and I think because this, the, each state has their own, their own way of dealing with the pandemic, um, that's, that's, the, that's what I'm hearing now. For example, for us, you know, Tennessee, Nashville, Memphis has always been a comfort tour, right? They, it's just a comfort in our industry. You know what, you know, a comfort tour is something that can easily sell Nashville comfort sell, whether it's, you know, the spring, whether it's fanfare, whether you tag it on with, you know, Memphis or Pigeon Forge, or you do a country Christmas in Nashville that sells by itself because it's a comfort tour. It's, it's not even moving, not even, you know, people are, are, you know, leery about about um, uh, travel. However, however, great statistic 
is that worldwide, 40% of the world's population is under the age of 25 and they love to travel. It's unbelievable. So we know that the trend is going to be towards travel. For example, uh, on one of the stats, the slides yesterday was showing that airline travel, Southwest Airlines is now the last airline that's going to be removing that middle seat. You know, in, in airlines now, they've been keeping that middle seat empty. All of the airlines have already opened theirs up. Southwest is the last airline that's going to be um, opening that seat. And that's starting, I think, next week. And what they're finding is that the public is supporting them because they know that if they don't, the traveling public, those that are that are flying, are supporting that because they know that if they don't, um, then you know the consequences are dire, right? And it was interesting because it said one of the one of the surveyed questions was if you were going on a flight and you had to sit in the middle seat, not knowing either person on either side of you, what was the percentage that you would, you would book that flight or take that flight? And it was like 34% only, I thought 34% said no, which I thought was, was a very low statistic. Yeah. But, um, that's flights. I digress. So where are we going as far as, um, in 2021, I think as a Canadian operator, I think our Canadian market will be big, will be strong. You know, Canadians are going to want to stay local meaning in Canada whether it's one of our you know provinces you know whether it's the Maritimes or it's out out you know east it's going to it's going to take a while to gain that confidence in the U.S. market you know we're having we're having suppliers and and I understand right you know people you know we need bums in buses we need beds we need bums in beds you know we need them in restaurants but the problem is until there is that confidence again in the consumer. I don't think we're going to see that for a while. The same thing goes with um, um, live performances, right? You know, Broadway, you know, when it comes back, how eager are people going to be to actually get into those, um, into those seats? So that's going to be- I'm going I'm to jump in with, with Chloe for just a minute because she said something that, that intrigued me with Staying closer to home. We talked about that. You know, we've been doing these webinars since the end of March, and we've been talking about staying closer to home, travel closer to home. Um, and then, and then you mentioned the the 25 and and range period for travelers and how much they love to travel. I think we're going to have a pent up demand on travel in general. But Chloe, what does what does that do for your market? Um, and the adventure travel market close to home, you know, kind of what are, what, what are you seeing with bookings and, and have you seen, you know, a pause altogether or since we're looking at that travel close to home, is it continued for you? Yes. First, it's important to understand the, the reality uh, of the Yukon, which is a uh, territory and it's pretty isolated and, and geographically. Um, most of our clientele comes from Europe. So we are 80% European based. So of course, for us, it was like a huge hit to stop the international travel. Um, that said, and I really like what uh, Christine was saying, uh, we I see this, this entire pandemic as a really great opportunity to uh, look into the local market. And by local, I mean Canadian market. Because right. um, as, as she mentioned, I, I think there will be uh, definitely a desire for Canadians to travel within their own country. And as the Yukon is, you know, quite exotic, uh, not everybody in Canada has had the chance to visit the Yukon, um, I think our product as uh, adventure um, travel, as far as it goes, being in nature, empty spaces, uh, wildlife, um, hopping on a canoe trip for two weeks. Uh, these are all things that will be very interesting for people. Not to say that people will not want to visit cities anymore, but I think there will definitely be um, a hype around being outside. Uh, fresh air, uh, you know, space. And the Yukon has all of this for you. So um, I think <laughs> I think we will be de definitely an interesting destination. And I'm really quite excited to see how um, people will react to um, the opening of the borders that uh, within Canada, even because um, at the moment, the Yukon is still close to rest of Canada. We are we having a bubble with uh, British Columbia. 
so um, people from BC can travel in and out. But we're really looking forward to uh, opening up that border to the rest of Canada so we can receive Canadians from, from all over. And we're really looking forward to that. Absolutely. We just had a question for you. I'm curious as if the Yukon itself, not just Canada, but the Yukon had travel restrictions right now. Yes, uh, as I just mentioned, yeah, so the Yukon border uh, right now, uh, if you're an American, you can only transit through the Yukon to go to Alaska. Uh, so the border with Alaska is obviously closed at the moment, uh, as any other part of the states. Um, the other restriction is basically uh, you can come to the Yukon at any time, but the restriction is that you have to quarantine for two weeks except if you're from British Columbia or if you're from uh, Northwest Territories and Nunavut. Um, so the rest of Canada needs to quarantine if they decide to come to the Yukon. Some operators are actually offering trips where uh, this is included in the trip. I'm thinking about some hunting lodges this fall who had to diversify their uh, offer to be able to receive people from Alberta, from other provinces who wanted to come on a hunting trip for two weeks. So they adapted their, um, their product to be able to uh, quarantine people with their staff and everything, uh, including accommodation and food and, you know, everything needed uh, to be able to offer that product to people wanting to come to the Yukon. So people are being really creative and it's great and it's amazing. Of course, it's not huge volume. So we have to, you know, be realistic. Nobody, not, not everybody will survive on this, but um, it's it's interesting how, how uh, creative people are at this, at this point in the Yukon, yes. I love that you mentioned that because Diane has a great, has, you know, has a great comment in the chat that um, business is different. You know, it's not great right now, but but moving moving forward. Um, and in 2021, she um, um, is a ranch in Lake George, and they have great corporate and social and wedding books. Um, and their business is just different moving into 2021. And you mentioned creativity and. And that dreaded word, you know, that we've heard since March, how are you going to pivot your business? Like one of the, the words that we've heard over and over again for the past six months. Uh, but it's true. Business is different moving forward. Um, so, so I, and I know you want to jump in on that, Christine. I could see it in your eyes. Yeah. No, I just wanted to clarify because I did see some of the chats coming in, like some of the, uh, the Q&As and the chats coming up. I'm trying to catch them quickly. But when I'm addressing the points that I've addressed previously, that's for group travel. When you're talking about FIT, and I know there's a lot of suppliers out there that are FIT, that's a big trend. I was just, and, and if anybody's interested, like I was just looking at the slides, like I screenshotted all the slides. You know, and one of these was, you know, your, your perceived safety of travel activities, you know, and it's interesting because the, the least amount was, was road tripping. Like people want to travel. So as far as, first, first thing I want to say is this is going to be a rough road until we get to let's say, you know, Q3, let's say June 1st, right? It's going to be a tough road to get there. Those of us that make it through to the other side will be unbelievably busy with this pent up demand because everybody's at home and they're sick of spending money on Amazon and they want to travel. So we will be crazy busy. That's one. But number two is what I'm addressing is group travel because that's what I do. But I know from being on all of the different Zooms and all the industry, um, you know, conferences and webinars that the FIT market is growing because people are traveling. They're just taking road trips. So for those of you out there that are attractions, like I saw Tremblant, Blue Mountain were there. Hello. And, uh, you know, for those of you that are hoteliers, that are attractions, that are restaurants, you know, you at least, you know, you might not get the group travel right away, but you will get the family travel and uh, those that are going to get in their own car and do their own thing. So whether you're in Pigeon Forge or whether you're in, you know, in Charlotte, you know, North Carolina or Charleston or Nashville or Memphis or, or Yukon, go Yukon. Yeah. Uh, you know, so there is that, you know, you're fortunate and that you can tap into that individual uh, travel market, you know, and so, you know, that's a bonus, you know, for me working specifically with groups and the, the from what we're hearing, our group travel is going to be much smaller. You know, we're looking at 12 to 20, 
instead of instead of filling a 56 you know passenger motor coach they're not anticipating that we're going to be back really into good numbers until 2023 like our solid pre-19 numbers yeah. until 2023 but i mean it will slowly you know it, you know improve from there the one thing that people are saying what that i've heard too from travelers and even our travelers is that they will not be waiting for a vaccine to travel Really? If, yep. They're feeling that if they, if like, I, I know people that have taken flights already across Canada and, uh, you know, from Toronto to Vancouver. And so, you know, they feel better that everyone's getting their temperature taken at the airport. Um, they're feeling better that, you know, they're, they're all getting packages to wipe down and, you know, they're wearing their masks and they've come home and, uh, and been fine. So the trend is starting to be, you know, if safety precautions were in place, they would be, uh, you know, they would feel more comfortable out tr about travel. I have been traveling, not uh, like in my car, but I've been doing site inspections all over Ontario because new for us is all of these destinations. I'm going to be offering destinations, Blue Mountain, um, that I've never done before, right? Um, that we've never actually looked at in our own backyard. I mean, our province is vast and beautiful. Quebec, our province next door. I mean, we do the basic Montreal, Quebec City, Tremblant, you know, but to look at the Eastern townships and to look in the different parts of, of Quebec City is is huge. So I think, you know, for tour operators like myself that are out there, you know, what's new in the market? Well, we're developing product closer to home um, in not in our own home province or state, but those closest to us um, and with smaller groups. But again, if you're a hotelier, an attraction, uh, a restaurant, you know, the the uh, FIT market is is slowly building. Um, the amount of traveling, uh, they did a survey on, on the slides about uh, clients who are the passengers who are going to be traveling over Christmas. The majority of them that were traveling were going to be by car. And so you know that there's hotels, there's restaurants, and you know, it's, uh, it's out there. It's just going to be, it's going, at least you've got the opportunity. Not what I don't, I mean, there aren't groups traveling anywhere. I have flatline. But for those of you that are on, on you know, the, the seller side, the other side of the table, at least you have the opportunity to catch those FIT um, travelers. Absolutely. So that's good for you. Let's look forward. So we're, we're talking June 2021. We're talking about being different. We're talking about being unique. Um, you're adding some tours in your own backyard. You know, what, what are the, the different new, how are you planning for, for June 21? Um, are you marketing? Are you reaching out to your clients? Are you creating, you know, different programs? And Christy, you, you mentioned you're creating those new tours, but are you actively marketing to get people on them and really just focused on 21 in June and onward? I think, you know, what I'm doing is I, I'm incubating it. You know, I didn't want to release any product just to have to pull it back. You know, I know I have a few, I have, I think my tour product that's on my website, um, mapleleaftours.com, I think starting in June, um, I have the Maritimes and I'm running out through 2022. Um, I'm finishing up a whole bunch of cruises that will start as of July, like Alaska. I'm putting Alaska out there for July, 2021, because we're seeing demand. Um, you know, we know that in, in that, that uh, Costa is sailing successfully in Europe. Um, so they're doing, they're doing well. Um, and I think, you know, once, once the uh, American cruise lines just, you know, figure out what they're going to do, it's going to explode. It's going to, it's going to be crazy, crazy busy. So, you know, the thing is now is people are sort of starting to look at it and think, okay, well, if we're really going to focus on 2021, um, a, how do you price it out? How do you get your blocks of space, right? For 2021, how does your supplier even give you a rate, right? And especially on a tour operator side, like myself with groups, you know, do you base it on 10, 20, 30, 40, 50? It's, uh, you know, that's going to be the, um, the interesting part. I'm looking at launching probably my product uh, January, uh, December 1st. I'm looking at, at launching more of it because for us, you know, Christmas is a huge time when, when travel sells, right? Either it's a gift certificate or it's cruise, uh, you know, so I, you know, I don't really want to miss that market, but again, as, as, and we need our suppliers to be flexible because we have to be flexible. For example, uh, the cruise lines, you know, they generally have now, they used to have 120, like four months was your final payment, right? They just changed that now down to two months. And, and that's huge for them to do that. So, you know, when we're looking at it, I'm going to call Amy at the Drury hotels. Cause I, 
love Drury Hotels, Amy. You're <laughs> my fave. Uh, jazz hands. And, uh, you know, but you, you look at your supplier and you think, okay, Amy, you know, I'd like to book, you know, Louisville, Kentucky, um, you know, or Lexington, we want to come to Kentucky, but you know, the 30 days is going to be very, very difficult because we might not know within that 30 days. So we're going to need our, our suppliers to be a little more flexible, especially hoteliers. Well, and that was going to be one of my questions actually for both of you. And I'll start with you, Chloe, is <laughs> no, excuse me, knowing that things are you know, we're, we're doing things differently. We're being unique. You know, are there operational changes that you guys have put in place, you know, for, for when things start with you that, that may be different or, you know, is it refund policies? You know, what are, you know, what are operationally some things that you guys have done to, to help people when they're coming into book or help groups coming in? Um, I think what Christine just said is absolutely right. I think flexibility is key. Um, I think all our um, B2B businesses uh, are, you know, everybody is thinking it's all on the fence. Uh, every, people are a little bit, uh, you know, worried about uh, sending money uh, abroad to book a trip. So we're, we're trying to go case by case and uh, really trying to be as flexible as possible with our partners and uh, with our direct clients as well. Um, in terms of operational changes, of course, uh, there are several things that we are actually working on right now. And some are little, some are big. And I think it's also a great opportunity for us to take the time to do those changes, such as um, having all the waivers and all the medical forms done online instead of uh, on the spot um, on paper when, when clients uh, come to the Yukon. So these are all little uh, things that we're working on right now that will be beneficial in the future, uh, pandemic or no pandemic. So right. we are kind of using this opportunity to uh, improve certain aspects of our business. Um, and of course, there's all the technical aspects, which I'm not going to mention because I think it's the same for everybody, but like obviously PPE, masks, um, you know, sanitizers and having the social distancing and everything when we receive new new guests with us. Um, everything is, you know, we worked out a plan, everything is on paper and we're, we're working within the regulations, uh, the government regulations. So, but that's, you know, that's everybody. So um, nothing special there. That said, yeah, I think it's a great time uh, since we have a little less um, uh, office work with bookings and everything to actually focus on what can we improve with all that time. And uh, that's at the stage that we're at right now. And we have like a actually really exciting project at the moment that will be beneficial for the years to come. So we're, we're quite happy. <laughs> that's, you know, and that's good. And that brings up a, a, a great point. Um, and, and we've heard this on a couple of our webinars on, you know, what, what this extra time is providing for us. And it's providing a way to really review products that you've had or ways that you've operated, everything to your point um, across all industries, um, not just for tour operators, not just for receptive tour operators. Our company produces trade shows. We've had the opportunity to look back and say, is this exactly the way that we should be operating? And let's tweak that to make sure moving forward that it's right for all of our clients, both operators and suppliers. So I, I agree. And I think it's also time to listen. And it's also time to have conversations with our partners and we, with our clients to be, is there anything missing at this point uh, for you on your perspective? Um, when you think about the Yukon, is there a product that you would like to see? Since we have time to be creative and create new things, um, for us, it was also to realize that, yeah, a lot of our products focus on Yukon and Alaska, obviously. Uh, Alaska is right there. If you come to the Yukon, you want to visit Alaska as well. Uh, that said, we, we at the beginning of the pandemic, we were starting to think, shouldn't, shouldn't it be great to actually also offer a Yukon-only product on the sightseeing category? Not necessarily just big adventures, but something more approachable in the Yukon only to keep um, people within Canada. So we worked on that and we created like a wonderful program that's actually being picked up right now by agencies in Canada. So these are all little things um, that, you know, this this time <laughs> gave us the, the opportunity to work on. <laughs> Absolutely, and I love that you said listening to each other and staying connected because that's why these webinars were even created. 
you know, back, yeah. back at the end of March. It's just a way for us to all stay connected and learn from each other. Um, so, so I, I love that you, that you said that. And, and Christine, what are, you know, we, we talked a little bit about this in May on maybe some of the ways that you might change doing business moving forward, but I'm sure that might have even changed between May to now on, on some things that you might be doing a little differently. Well, I mean, we're shuttered. Right. So there's no change, right? We don't see, we don't see, we don't see a reopen date until next year, maybe February, maybe March, if we're lucky. You know, in Canada, we, you know, we're very lucky. Our, our federal government, we have, um, you know, a wage subsidy, right? That was one of the questions. And they've, and they've extended uh, offers until June, right? So we now have a wage subsidy until June of 2021. So, you know, there are certain parameters. Anybody in travel and tourism is not going to have a problem qualifying for that. So, you know, we're, we're shuttered. And, you know, when you talk about reopening, you know, for those, I mean, those of you in hotel, your suppliers on the other end of the, on the other end of this, who are watching this, I mean, you're already open. You know, when we, in other webinars that we're listening to health and safety, they're saying, listen, if you're not reopening till next year, don't do anything yet. For example, do you remember when everybody went nuts with plexiglass? Mm -hmm. Right. He said by 2021, that's going to be gone. Don't waste your money with plexiglass because everybody jumped on the plexiglass bandwagon and probably in 2021, it's going to be enough that you're social distancing with a face mask, you know, so save yourself the five grand on plexiglass and wait. So, you know, and again, with health and safety, there are so many things that are changing. We don't even know how the motor coach industry is going to roll out. You know, Pete Pantuso, who's, who's uh, you know, president of the American Bus Association, was on the on the uh, women in buses yesterday. I mean, we don't even know how how that's going to roll out on a motor coach or a minibus or even a limousine, right? So we're so we're sort of still waiting to see how how that's going to roll out and what equipment they're going to be using to disinfect that. So we're uh, for as far as I am, I'm shuttered and there aren't any changes. So um, one thing that's that is would be interesting from a supplier standpoint when we start rolling and when we start rolling out these itineraries, what would be super awesome is if there was sort of some sort of standardized rating where hotels, attractions, or hoteliers, um, restaurants had um, you know COVID COVID safety approved or you know COVID trained or something that we could put that on a tagline. You know, I, again, I'm, I'm beating the Drury Inn's drum because, well, I love them. But, um, you know, if you if you put a hotel in your itinerary or you put an attraction like Chloe's, you know, that you have there, you know, that they, you know, are, you know, even if it was like, you know, C, you know, CP, COVID approved or CA, COVID approved, that you know that that hotel or that restaurant or that attraction has done those steps. There isn't, I, I, not that I know of, maybe there is something already out there that I'm not aware of, but as far as, as uh, tour operators planning these things, that, that would be huge in, in helping the confidence of our clients when they looked at an attraction and knew that if we were going to Washington for the Cherry Blossom Festival and we're staying, you know, at, um, you know, the Hilton Garden Inn and it's, you know, CA, so it's COVID approved, uh, you know, that sort of thing is very helpful. Um, especially at that demographic. I can read somebody, Lisa McClure is saying something, but I, I can't read it. It's too tight. Too small. Um, I, got you. I got your back. So okay. to that point, there are, are several, several um, um, destinations on their own that are creating COVID safe programs and cleanliness programs. So you'll see those throughout. Um, and then the WHO has also created some programs that are used that many people throughout the industry are getting involved with and making sure that, that they have that certification. Right, so here's, here's the rub. They're all so different. Right. You know, so that's, that's like, you know, us trying to dig, take a deck of cards and separating them into clubs, spades, hearts, and diamonds, right? Because everybody's got their own, there, there isn't one. So, I mean, you, you could you could put that down. I mean, we're looking right. at that in terms and conditions. Right. So I think I think to, to that point, you're right. Just like rules are different for the provinces and the states, and everybody kind of has that. Destinations have created that within, which is I think a great way to promote that safe and clean for their destination and their partners. Um, so I would look to the WHO and the WTTC. They have both created programs that that suppliers all over the world um, and operators all over the world, for that matter, have have looked into to create some some nice certification. Um, 
that that many and, and you have many people on our chat here who have brought that up so i appreciate it and um, we do have some some questions um and specifically for you christine from jeffrey um we're talking about q3 2021 when we yep. think things might be picking up yep. keep curious that if your clients are looking more towards 22 and beyond like we think we might start rolling and might start recovering next year but our oh, most yeah. I, i'll have i'll have tours starting canada day yeah June, yeah. even before that, June, they'll start booking. They'll start, they'll start booking. And that's why I think, you know, to get that initial push, we're going to need flexibility from our suppliers, right? Because in order to get them out there, but I, I, they'll for sure, you know, 2022, we're going to be off to the races, but people will be traveling. I mean, that was, that was, I was going to pulling up the slides again, if anybody wants a copy of those slides, um, she, she gave them to all of us, but I mean, they're looking at, um, uh, 2022, they'll be, they'll be off to the races. You know, it's just, it's getting that, it's getting that, you know, Q2 of next year of 2021 up and going. One thing I did want to mention, I don't know if there are other tour operators out there, or just suppliers, but one thing that we're going to be doing and looking at doing is in all of our overnight tours is including COVID, COVID insurance in the tour package. Um, it's very, the problem with that is that there are so many caveats uh, but it is out there. We can, yeah, you know, for those of you who are tour operators and you can sell, you know, cancellation, medical, deluxe, all that good stuff. Um, uh, Alliance Insurance now has a COVID package insurance, which is completely separate that you can buy. And uh, we're looking at including that um, in our Q2, Q3 tours in 2021, not making it optional, just including COVID insurance to see if that makes a difference, you know, so we're, we're going to package a couple of, of them overnight, and then we're going to send them out as test tours to see what people say. We have a very huge database with our clients, and um, so we're going to survey them and see how much of a different that, difference that makes. Would they be more inclined to travel? Um, and we'll only include that for multi-day tours, U.S. and Canada. I think we'll all, everyone on the phone, everyone on the call kind of sat up straighter, and we're all going to be very interested to see how that goes for you, and if it makes if it makes a difference for your clients. So we'll, we'll be curious to, to come back on. We're, well, we'll mark, it down. we'll mark it down on the calendar. June of next no. year, we're gonna come back on and have that conversation. Okay. And it's, if you look at it, you can go to the Alliance Insurance website. It's on there, COVID insurance coverage. And it tells you exactly what's included. There are a few little hiccups that you think, okay, so, you know, um, you know for, do you wanna give you an example? Sure. Well, let's just say my tour goes to Florida. My group's in Florida and I've got, I've got COVID insurance for the whole group. While we're down there, um, Jane Doe gets COVID. Her and her husband are there and she gets COVID. So she goes to the hospital. Um, the basically, from what I'm understanding and reading it, the, the attending physician decides whether she stays in Florida or whether they air ambulance her back to her home uh, in Kingston, Ontario, right? Um, if she's fine and she can go back to the hotel, then she just joins the tour and all is good. She would have to self-isolate and there is a per diem for self-isolation. It's not a lot, but it's there. Um, the, only, the only hiccup that I could see so far that I have to iron out is, for example, if you're on a shorter tour, let's say we're in um, Virginia Beach. We've gone down to see Jim. We love Jim. We love Virginia Beach. We're in Virginia Beach and Jane Doe gets COVID in Virginia Beach and she's in the hospital. If she misses the motor coach trip home because she is in hospital, then she is on her own. It's not, that's not covered in insurance for her to find her way home. So there are still a few things to be ironed out uh, with it, um, but it's something that we're looking at including on the, all of our overnight tours. And, you know, and I, and I have a feeling that like everything else that we're seeing lately, it, it will change and it will develop and it will as, as we move through this. Yes. Um, but that's good to know. And we'll, we'll be circling back to find out how that went. Um, so we have some questions coming through. And in addition to um, um, Jeffrey and your clients looking to 22, for both of you, the question is on rates. Um, and, and this is something that I think kind of goes back to flexibility that you both were talking about being flexible and listening and, and providing what, what your clients needed. So I think it'll be great to get it from both of your perspectives. Um, one of the question, Christine, is um, are you having issues moving forward getting rates from U.S. suppliers? Um, and 
And my question for you, Chloe, would be, you know, when you're creating rates, are, are you finding it difficult to put a rate together moving forward that, you know, matches your 2020 rates or coming down to entice people to come in? You know, what, really, how are you tackling that? Chloe, do you want to start? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> So we've made a big decision uh, at Ruby Range and we decided not to increase rates for 2021 uh, just to make things easy for our partners. Uh, we knew that it was going to be a challenging, um, a challenging time. So we decided to keep everything uh, the same for 2021. That was our decision because we were able to do it at this point. So we decided to slide with that and it made, it made life really, really easy for everyone. Uh, that said, we are also already looking into 2022 with some markets that are um, obviously not going to travel in 2021. I'm thinking about Australia, for example. We recently had um, a trade show with this market and in the Yukon, and it, it was it's everybody's looking into 2022. Uh, in order to be able to fix our prices for 2022, we are actually. Um, looking into it right now yes it's hard because we don't really know what's going to happen with alaska at this point and how much things are going to increase so we're going to see a slight increase in 2022 but we're really really working hard to keep um yeah. keep everything as low as possible for our um to ease the life of all our partners yes absolutely and well, and that's, and that's one thing that, that we've talked about in, in working with each other and, and being flexible moving forward. Um, we've had a couple of questions about masks. You know, we've talked about safety and security and kind of changing the way we do things. Um, I think uh, we talked a, a little bit about, about Plexi and I think more people will travel more when they feel more comfortable. And back in March, we didn't know what we were dealing with. So as people are learning more and learning how to, how to live through a pandemic, you might, you know, you see some, some people having better consumer sentiment about going out and traveling than they did maybe six months ago. Um, but specifically the questions are, do you think you'll have issues having travelers keep their masks in place when they're traveling? No. Um, and not just not just on the tour, but traveling in general. Do you see an issue with that, or have you had any pushback? I haven't. You know, I mean, I've been in, I've been in contact with our clients, and I mean, everybody is so so respectful of keeping themselves safe and everybody else safe. I don't think you know. I don't think you're going to have. I don't think that you're, we're going to have issues with that. I was just looking for an email because I was requesting group space for a, a group in March of 2022. And I just got an email, good morning, Christine. Unfortunately, we can't, we are not booking in 2022 yet. There's that. Mm. So I just, it was very apropos that the question, and I knew I'd just seen it come in because everybody now is starting to request space for 2022. Right. Because they know the demand is gonna be so high. I think as far as, you know, when it comes to motor coach tours, group tours, whatever, um, you know, even FITs, like I know one of the museums, I just saw it, I got an email blast. One of the museums is taking temperatures, you know, as the, as the clients enter. So I don't think they're going to have, I haven't heard that from my clients, that we're going to have a problem with anybody being compliant with having their temperature taken, with even having a COVID test. You know, the airlines now are saying cruise lines, Look at the cruise lines, what they're rolling out, right? What the CDC is rolling out, that not only do you have to have a COVID test before you board the ship, you have to co have a COVID test and pass it before you disembark, right? So, I mean, and people are, are going to be lining up. Sure, sign me up. Um, so I don't think, I don't think that we're going to have any problems. Um, you know, and if you have some guy being the Lone Ranger saying, I'm not wearing no mask, you can be damn sure that everybody's going to shame that person into putting that mask back right. on. Right. Uh, so Sarah and Sarah was, is, took the words right out of my mouth. She uh, said exactly what I would as a past DMO. She was like, hey, DMOs can help you with whomever that client is, and, and we don't want you to tell us, but contact the DMO and, and they will reach out and make sure that, that you can get those those rates in 2022. Well, and I think from a supplier side, how do they determine those rates? Maybe they haven't determined those rates, but you know, I think everybody's been hoping that you know there's going to be some recouping of of losses in 2021. But I mean, really, 2022. I've got my cruises booked through 2023 now. 
and um, you know, but I just, I don't, I don't, I'm not as fortunate with my hotels um, right now, but that's where I think everybody's going to be focusing. But again, if I had any positive words for anybody, I think you're very lucky on the supplier side because the FIT traveler is traveling. And when, when people are traveling like that, that that means that they're feeling more comfortable that they're going to be start starting to say, well, you know what, we went to, um, you know, we went to Graceland and, you know, we stayed at the guest house and it was clean and it was safe. And then they come home and they'll say, you know what, they actually did it okay. It's not so bad. You know, you could go. And I think that's how, it's, you know, the FIT market is going to slowly plant the seeds for, for everything to sort of uh, move on. And, you know, I would love to be back in this, let's say in March, to see how things are going in March, right? Right. Because, I mean, you see Christmas, right? Everybody's going to be gathering at Christmas. And then, you know, what, two, three, four weeks after the big gatherings is when you're going to see a spike. I mean, there's talk about a possible third wave because of Christmas, if people aren't safe. But, um, you know, I think, I think, you know, we can talk back in June again, you know, May 7th, let's have a re let's have a one year anniversary in May. One 7th. year anniversary on May 7th. And we'll I see think, how things are. Yeah. Think, <laughs> yeah. I think you'll see that we're going to be fine. So at least, you know, for tour operators like me, it kind of sucks to be us because we're just still incubating and trying to be positive and keep it positive and, and think of new products. I mean, you know, if I was a supplier, I would be reaching out to tour operators and, and uh, you know, travel groups or anything saying, you know, hey, listen, you know, have you ever thought of, you know, coming to see the ARC? <laughs> like, what? I got that. And I was like, the ARC? Oh, right, I saw you at a trade show. And now I'm seriously looking at the ARC because who knows, we might need it if this keeps up. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, it's that brings up two really good points that I know I, I tell everyone that this goes by really fastly fast when we start talking and we have eight minutes left. Okay. So a, couple of, a couple of things I want to get in. Um, one, uh, we had a great question from Kim um, talking about the exchange rate. And Christine, this is probably specifically for you, but do you see even when borders open and people are more comfortable, so take all of that out of it, do you think the exchange rate might be a problem? um for tours coming down once all i don't think so because i i don't think i mean they will i mean but i mean i don't i don't see they're not changing they haven't changed a lot you know when i'm looking at the the exchange rates they haven't changed a lot depends on what happens i mean that's the thing right we have to forecast three six nine twelve months out to see what the, that's going to be um you know we sort of hedge our bets and you know sometimes you know factor in a little more um, so, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next couple of weeks, you know, on the other side of the border. Absolutely. But here's yeah. the other thing. Here's the other thing I wanted to mention to, to, to suppliers is that customers know our customers know, and I talk to them a lot, uh, because we just keep in touch, whether it's by email, we have big, we have uh, get togethers outside on the grass, they come by. Um, but they understand that things are going to cost more. They know that the that the, the you know the cost to keep a hotel safe and clean, the cost to keep a, you know a restaurant staffed and clean, that just 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 doesn't come out of thin air, right? And so they understand that there is going to be somewhat more of an increased cost um, to travel for anything, really for across the board, right? and, and we've heard that across all markets as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, I do want to point out uh, Belinda, um, who is a New England coach who has been on one of our webinars before. I love that you're on this one now. Let me just say that. Um, wanted to share that it's really so important to communicate with clients, um, you know, about what partners are doing, about traveling, knowledge is power. Um, and that, you know, that's really what, what we're doing here today is just staying connected and sharing ideas and making sure that that, that we're providing the best options possible, you yep. know, for, for all of the markets. Kim also Wait. wants to know what your email is, Christine. Uh, oh. and I can share that. Absolutely can share that with you, Kim. I will share it with everyone so so everyone can get in touch with each other. Great. So, so we have five minutes left. Go ahead, Christine. Oh, now I just forgot what I was going to say. Because oh, it'll come back to you in a minute. Uh, so we have five minutes left. Uh, we didn't touch on marketing much. I know, Christine, you're not really throwing a lot of marketing out there, um, but I will say that I've been following all of your posts and your LinkedIn posts about tours and places that you have been, and, and that's been great. Um, Chloe, are you doing any specific marketing right now um, to, to get the word out? 
We are still present on social media. We're, do we're doing a little bit um, of SEM, but we're keeping things low at the moment. Uh, and we're going to do a big push uh, in a few months for summer 2021. So awesome. yeah, we are expecting a little bit of business this winter, but fairly limited. And we are aware of that and that's okay. Mm -hmm. But I think everybody is looking ahead at summer 2021 and uh, we're really hoping to um, welcome Canadians to the Yukon and uh, take, take them all on great adventures. So that's Absolutely. what we're focusing on at the moment. So we're going to try to inspire people to get the to get to that point and tease them a little bit with some um, adventure pictures and the stories. That's the best thing ever. And I'm also going to ask, since we have four minutes, I'm going to ask if you have any words of wisdom as, as an attraction, you know, you're, you're that nice little hybrid, right? You do tours and you provide tours for people and you're a great attraction within Canada for all of your attraction friends out there and tour providers out there. Um, any words of wisdom moving through the rest of the year and into next year? You know, we talked about being creative. What, uh, anything you can share that people should be focused on? I think, I think it's the idea I always had since the beginning of this thing is like, we have to be a little bit like water and just flow with the current. And I mean, you know, <laughs> it, it's just, Let's let's just think about opportunities and and just follow yeah follow the current let's just just go downstream and we're all get we will all get at the right place at the right time and I'm I really believe that something some positive things will come out of this and uh, you know in the world in like a, a, a more global um, scheme as well so I'm 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 quite I'm quite about let everything flow and grab opportunities when you see them and uh, yeah. And that's what I would have to say. And be inspiring. Absolutely. It's the time to inspire people. And so, uh, nugget, nugget for those out there. Join. I thought I was hoping you would have a nugget for us. Nugget, <laughs> nugget. You got to join your, get involved in your association. Go to LinkedIn, join LinkedIn. There are so many opportunities, so many tour travel opportunities. I'm on LinkedIn, Christine Geary, K-R-I-S-T-I-N-E, at mapleleaftours.com. There are webinars daily. It's insane. And every day I get one nugget. There's a takeaway. And I mean, it's keeping it positive. I mean, I'm flatlined. I'm shuttered. Nothing's happening till next year. But there's always something that I look at in one of these Zooms or webinars that I think, snap, that's for me. You know, I mean, yeah, we're Zoomed out. Yeah, we're webinared out. And sometimes just just do it on your picture. Don't do audio so they can see you in your PJs. But there are nuggets every day that you can think of and think, I'm going to use that. I could do that. And this is all part of incubating to get ourselves out there. I mean, we could talk, we could talk ad nauseum because I think it's amazing and there are so many things. But LinkedIn, most people don't realize the opportunities that are LinkedIn. I must join two or three Zooms a day on LinkedIn. You know, and all of the all of the travel sites are free. You just have to follow them and then they're just loaded there you know anybody wants advice send it to me and i'll shoot you all the links it's unbelievable we're going to get through this we're going to kick ass when we are on the other side of this and we're all going to get together and have drinks absolutely that's it yeah, a lot of people ask for slides and so um i'm going to connect you with christine or i will send it out if i am able um we talked a little bit about um uh, the American Bus Association and the good work that they are doing that, that you are part of, Christina, we are part of ABA as well in America, um, moving buses, moving to America. Make sure and they have, ABA has a special, has yeah. a special sub, uh, women in buses. It's women only and it's amazing networking. Great. Perfect. Well, then I will, we are at two o'clock, so I won't take any more of your time because I could continue to talk with you. Um, Thank you, thank you, thank you, Chloe and Christine for taking Good luck, everyone. Today. We're going to be and, fine. And uh, we had tons of people on the call from all over, um, really just trying to stay connected and and us getting through this together. And I think flexibility and, and communication and knowledge, certainly um, the, the key highlights from our conversation today, other than just being able to see both of you again. Um, so thank you for taking the time. Thank you, Sherry. Um, thank, thank you, so Chloe. Much. Talking travel yeah. again next Thursday at one o'clock. Um, and if you have any questions, reach out to any of us. We'll be happy to answer them. Thanks, everyone.